good looking. Hello, Blake. Mr. O'Connor, I believe. Mr. D, you newspaper man. How are you, Joe? Fine, thanks. But Blondie, I didn't know you were working in the immigration department. How come? I got transferred from the narcotic division. Did you fellas over there miss me? I'll say we have. You should see the settler's powder they put in your place. Yeah, some congressman's niece. She's got a mustache. I suppose you all thought I'd been fired. No, I figured the Supreme Court had declared you unconstitutional. The chief is waiting for you. Say, what's up, do you know? Maybe they want to run you for president. No, hang you for murder. Yeah, that must be it. Well, you can't keep a good man down. Alan's a grand guy. They say he used to be an actor. Just an amateur when he was in college. O'Connor's a swell scout. And he's been piling up a fine record, too. I've had excellent reports on your work, O'Connor. So I've asked the Bureau of Narcotics to transfer you temporarily to the Immigration Service. Well, thanks, Mr. Lang. What seems to be wrong with the Immigration Service? Well, we're in a spot on the West Coast. Asiatics are being smuggled in by land and water. It's a tough racket, a dirty mess, and we're going to clean it up. I want you to go out there and see what you can do about it. Hmm. When do I start? Right away. Look here. Ever hear of that fella? Bert Darrell. Darrell's one of the really big shots we've never been able to nail with an important rap. Narcotics was his specialty. So you think he's mixed up in this alien smuggling racket, huh? Yes, I do. We've reason to believe he's financing it. I want a fresh mind to work on this, O'Connor. Someone never before identified with this department. I want you to go to Hollywood and as soon as you get there, report to the district commissioner in Los Angeles and he'll tell you all you need to know. After that, you're on your own. Do you buy it? It's a sale. I knew it would be. I'll get going. fellas bound for? Oh, we're making a few stops on our way north. You're not the same boys who brought this coach over the line the other night? Oh, no, sir. This coach went in through Mexicali. The company has a dozen coaches like this one. All look the same. Yes, I know. Much of a load tonight? Pull up! Uh, some American workmen killed in that Soledad mine explosion. No duty on this cargo. Uh, no passports either. They got their tickets all one way. Six, eh? I see. Well, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Inspector. What? Sure, I pass them. Why, their papers were in order? Okay, we'll get them. Those men on that ambulance coach are phonies. The real driver and his helper were held up, beaten, and left out in the desert. Get after those guys and bring them back here. They're probably taking the road to Buckham Springs. Yes. Hello, hello, Central. Speed cop chasing us! I told you that you never get away with this load. Well, we can try. Where are you going with all that speed? We got a load here that needs quick delivery, officer. Open her up. I want to take a look inside. It's a look you won't like. I can stand it. Open her up. Okay. <laughs> Stiff, eh? I'll just take you and your load back to the border. Good morning, Globe Productions Incorporated. No, we haven't started production yet. Hurry. 
Glow Productions Incorporated. Well, yes, we expect to produce a picture very soon. You're welcome. Mom, has Shirley Temple got anything that I haven't got? Not a thing, darling. Not a thing. That's just what I suspected. Hello, Glow Productions Incorporated. Announcing Miss Reynolds of the Morning Dispatch. Good morning, Miss Reynolds. You have an appointment? How can you get an appointment in an office where nobody ever shows up at the telephone, girl? This makes the fifth time I've been here. Sorry, Mr. Brace, our production manager, is... Is out of town. That's the same parlor I got before. Isn't he ever coming back? Of course he is. He'll be back any day now, but, uh... You don't know when. Who else have you got who can talk? Mr. Pirelli, our director's here, but he never talks. What's the matter? Is he dumb? I mean, he never sees anyone. Oh, poor devil. He's blind. Say, what kind of picture producers are these that don't want to be interviewed? Don't they know the value of publicity? You tell Mr. Pirelli I want to see him. I'm sorry. What have you got to be sorry about? Get glad, get glad. Hey, Speedy, snap out of it. The operation's over and we've got your appendix. Where's it, where's it? What do I shoot? Put it away, put it away. Nothing to shoot in this place. Nothing but the same old stool. What'd I tell you? What kind of a story do you expect to get from an independent company that ain't never made a picture? I'll get my story. Once I start something, I finish it. When a motion picture producer tells all, that's no news. But when he won't tell anything, that is news. You know, just like the man who bit a dog. Do you think I bite a dog? Hey, I'd like to have had a picture of that. Oh, oh, oh! Good morning, Glow Productions Incorporated. No, he isn't back yet. Sorry. Help yourself, baby. That's the only way to get anything in this world. Stick your paw in there and grab what you want. <laughs> Hello, honey. That female news hound's out here again. Can't you think of something to tell her? I've about run out of gags. Well, go into your dance. Come in here, gorgeous. I've got something to tell you. Productions Incorporated. No, Mr. Brace is in New York, and it looks as though he never will come back. Morning, Glow Productions Incorporated. No, this is not a wet wash laundry, but I can connect you with a swell Turkish bath. Same to you, sweetheart. Why are you? Monty Brace will catch you during that one of these days, and then where will you be? I've cooled off better guys than Monty Brace. Listen, beautiful. Don't let that guy put you behind the eight ball. What are you afraid of? You know very well what I'm afraid of. You know how jealous Monty is. We don't want to start anything now that this new setup is running so sweet. Say, what am I going to do with this dizzy dame from the morning dispatch? First thing you know, she'll be printing some goofy story. It'll get the whole outfit in bed. <laughs> well, don't you worry. Brace will be in today on the noon plane, and we'll let him handle her. Trust that muck to think up a good one. Take this back to the reception room, will you? Come on, Dynamite. We've got to make the noon plane. Put my camera. Oh, oh lady, I'm sorry. I would just turn it around. Oh. Now, you get out of here before you break I'm going. everything. I'm going. Baby! I'm coming. I'm sorry. Hello, Chief. This is your girl, Friday. Yeah, I'm at the airport, and have I got a hot tip. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know there's something phony about that whole outfit. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay, I'll keep you posted. Goodbye. Get set, will you? Get set. All right, I'm doing the best I can. Well, hurry up and don't blow this one up. I want a picture of that man, Brace. All right, I'll get it. Keep your girdle on. 
Where's my plate holder? Holy smoke, Bobby, I'm blind. Come out of your dither, will you? Here's your plate holder. I'll pry an interview out of that mysterious Mr. Brace or bust. I don't even know the man. You don't know what he looks like. You leave that to me. Hurry up, here they come. Hello there, Mr. Brace. Czego pan nie chciał do mnie? Ja pan nie rozumie. Mr. Brace of all people. Don't brace me, young woman. It won't get you a thing. Hi, Mr. Brace. Oh, hi there, cutie. This is a surprise. Ow! Wrong number. Welcome to Hollywood, Mr. Brace. Thanks. What do you want? I'm Miss Reynolds of the Morning Dispatch. I want to know all about your production plans. Well, my production plans are not for publication. Oh, you would, would you? Where do you get that stuff? Well, I'm all... Oh, Jesus. Say, do you know any other nice games? Well, you didn't have to fall over me. You could have jumped, couldn't you? No, playing leapfrog, eh? Hey, call your shots next time, will you? I wasn't trying to play anything. Every time I start to shoot a picture, something like this happens to me. It makes me so gosh darn mad I can yell. I seem to have the wrong hat here. Oh, yeah. That's mine. Here. This one's yours. <laughs> Thanks. There's yours. What are you running away from, Mr. Brace? All I want is an interview for my paper. Remind me to hate you. United Airlines limousine for Hollywood and Los Angeles is now leaving. Why, Leslie Howard, of all people, this is a break. I saw the preview of Romeo and Juliet the other night, and you were swell. Excuse me, young lady, the name's not Howard. I'm one of the Marx brothers. Not Harpo. No, Groucho, and I know you. You're Edna May Oliver. Oh, and this bright little fellow here is Freddie Bartholomew, isn't he? Too bad I have my autograph book. I'll see you again sometime. Wait a minute. I know you're an actor anyway. Well, that remains to be seen. I'm Miss Reynolds of the Morning Dispatch, and this is Speedy Callahan. What do you think of California? What's your name? What company are you signed up with? O'Connor's the name. I'm crazy about your climate. I'm not signed up. I'm out here to make a test if I can get one. And there ought to be a law against Callahan. So long. Hey, wait a minute. Come on, Satchel. Look, I know a lot of people out here. If you want a test, I'm sure I can get you one. Well, that's very nice of you, but... Uh... I've got my car right here. I can drop you anywhere you want to go. I know a nice hotel tour. I can get you a good rate. See, I thought you said you were a newspaper woman. <gasps> Sound more like a committee from the Chamber of Commerce. Do you want to meet the Chamber of Commerce? That's a cinch. Come on, I can introduce you to them, too. Well, what can I lose? I wouldn't be so impatient, O'Connor. You've only been on the case two weeks. You must crawl before you run. Yeah, crawl is right. That's all I've done, crawl in the dark looking for a lead. What little I've picked up, I've convinced the smugglers have their headquarters right here in this town. They're using some respectable business for a false front. That makes it a process of elimination. And that always takes time. Yeah. Oh, I've got a date at the hospital with young Stewart at the Border Patrol. I'm afraid Stewart hasn't much chance of recovery. No. Cerny did a brutal job on that poor lad. He can only talk a few minutes at a time. He can barely remember what happened to him that night. Shame. Tell me, how are you doing with your motion picture tests? <laughs> oh, I have a couple lined up with independent companies. <laughs> I suppose it won't be long before I'll see your name in lights. Well, as long as you don't see it in the obituary notices, it's all right with me. <laughs> so long. He wanted me to give you this, Mr. O'Connor. We found it gripped tightly in his hand the night they brought him here. Stuart, Mr. O'Connor's here. Hello, Stuart. You wanted me to have this? I was talking to one of the men at the back of the ambulance. Yeah? I couldn't see his face very well, but I watched his hands. He kept rolling that little piece of paper. Yeah, a nervous habit, I suppose. A crazy one, I thought. I found it lying in the road after they'd gone. I forgot all about it until this morning. It may not help you any. And then again, it may. Yeah, I've known men with such habits. Compulsion obsession, science calls it. 
You'll have to go now, Mr. O'Connor. All right. Goodbye, Stuart. Bye. Bye. Here he is now. We have a telephone call for you, Mr. O'Connor. Will you take it here? Yes, thanks. The lady's been calling ever since you left this morning. Hmm. O'Connor speaking. Hi there, actor. Oh, hello, Bobby. How's your motion picture career? Oh, I've been getting around. If I could ever find you in, I'd fix it so you could meet the right people. What you need is a good agent. I've got one. Who is it? Blitz. That big cheese? Listen, that guy's so corny, he double-crossed his own mother just to prove to himself he's a rat. <laughs> well, he thinks he can get me a job with Globe Productions. He couldn't even get you their telephone number. Why, do you know them? Know them? Why, I practically own the place. You meet me there in ten minutes, and I'll start your career off with a bang. I have a hunch about Globe Productions. Yeah, so have I. I'll see you there. Right. Hello, Miss Temple. Good morning. I've got a man coming in here who's one of the best picture bests that ever hit this town. Here he is now. Me, Mr. O'Connor, fresh from the Broadway stage. I'm giving you people the first crack at him. Hello, Mr. O'Connor. Hello. I think we met before, but why didn't you tell me you were a great actor? Well, it's the curse of my fatal modesty, as I hate to talk about myself. So, you know each other, huh? You've been holding out on me. Oh, no, I told you I'd been getting around. Yes, I've been a chair warmer on several occasions in this office lately. Did you get in to see anybody? Nope, but I had some nice chats with Miss Temple. Yeah, I'll bet you got a lot of information out of that chatterbox. Now, look here. If you'll get us in to see Mr. Brace... Then you'll get the interview you're after, won't you? Well, why not? Two stones with one bird. I'm sorry, but, but Mr. Mr. Brace, Brace is, is out. out. Yeah. <laughs> but he is, really. Well, what about Mr. Pirelli? Well, he's out, too. I'm sorry. Of course you are. Your heart's just breaking, isn't it? Well, Bobby, looks like we're stymied. Oh, no, we're not. Now, look here. Dame to dame. I'm giving Glow Productions a break. If you'll only play ball with me. Glow Productions, Incorporated. Why, Mr. Brace is our production manager, but he's in New York. No, I don't know when he'll be back. Sorry. She's still sorry. Well, there's no use hanging around here. Well, I wouldn't say that. Something's liable to happen any minute. Hey, something is happening right now. Holy smoke, I smell smoke. So do I. Well, no wonder. Look at that. Call the fire department. The place is on fire. Mr. Pirelli, Mr. Pirelli. What's the matter? What's going on in here? Mr. Pirelli, I heard you were out. Never mind what you heard. Shall I call the fire department? No, take it easy, will you? Here, here, it's only the wastebasket. I don't want it. You keep it. Well, what'll I do with it? Shall I throw it out the window? Now, wait a minute. I'll fix it. Oh! There. Now you're all right. I'm all right, huh? I look fine, huh? Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Pirelli, we've been waiting to see you. Have you? What about? Well, in the first place, I'm Miss Reynolds of the Morning Dispatch, and this is Mr. O'Connor from Broadway. And I'm Mr. Callahan, the fireman. And I'm looking for a job in the movies. I have no time to talk about jobs now. I'm working on a script. A script? Well... You must be starting production soon. Yes, we start a picture tomorrow morning. Good. Uh, have a cigarette. So you're starting tomorrow. Well, that's swell. I'll announce it in my paper. Suit yourself. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to know Globe Productions is getting underway at last. Yes, I was beginning to worry about you people, Mr. Pirelli. Were you? Mm-hmm. What studio are you working at? We're shooting exteriors first, going on location, water stuff. The company leaves the municipal pier the first thing in the morning. Sure you wouldn't have a little part for me? Sure, I'm sure. The cast is all filled. Well, good luck anyway. Thanks. Same to you, fella. You bet. Bobby, I certainly appreciate the trouble you're taking for the sake of my career. Oh, that's okay. Anything for a pal. Besides, there's no trouble at all to her. We gotta get down to free today anyway. In this town, you've gotta grab opportunity by the tail and hang on to it. Yeah, and if it hollers, twist it. Do you really know this fellow Brace? Sure, I know him. Of course she knows him, only he won't admit it. That man's a mystery to me. Where there's a mystery, there's always a story. What's so mysterious about him? 
way he works under cover, avoiding publicity, starting a picture without telling the press. He's hiding something. Third dimension, color processor, another garbo. But I'm keeping after him till I run it down. Hmm. Shall I look at your oil, miss? Well, if it'll make you feel any better. You bet. You see, there's a Chinese revolutionary general getting in today. And the Empress of China. And I've got to interview him while a stooge grabs a picture. What is the Chinese general's name? General, uh, too long yet. No, it isn't. It's long hot poo or something like that. It'll take about one quart, miss. See if it won't settle for a pint. You bet. The ship's in. That's all right. I'll sit up right out here. You go shoot the general out so I can get a good shot at him. On your tiptoes, big boy. Hello, Chief? Just checking in. I'm at Pier 49. Okay. Goodbye. Hello there, General. How tricks? Right this way, please. Look, 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 Mr. will you please, just, just, oh, just... pardon just, me. Yeah. Thank you. How many extras you taking on location today? Twenty? Too bad you can't make it a hundred. Uh, too big a risk. You see, that was my original idea, to take 20 Hollywood extras over in the morning and bring back 20 real Chinese in the same costumes at night. It's a good gag if you don't overdo it. Here they come now. Oh, boy, I'll get it now. I hope. You see, I'm Miss Reynolds of the Morning Dispatch. My paper would like a statement on any subject of interest to you. And what do you think of the climate of California? Yes, I quite agree with you. But uh, have you an interpreter, General? I'm not so hot on my Chinese lately. I see no interpreter. But you are highly in favor of a democratic government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Did you get it? Oh, boy, did I get it, Ed? How? Bobby. Look, is that brace with Pirelli? Sure it is. Come on. I'm right with you. Hi there, Mr. Brace. I hear you're starting production today. Yeah, so what? I'd like to announce it in the dispatch, that's all. Now tell me, what do you call your picture? Fools Rush In. Swell title. Sounds like an action story. Oh, I want you to meet Mr. O'Connor, one of the best leading men that ever left Broadway. It's a pleasure. You should never have left it, O'Connor. Well, a fellow has to eat, you know. Besides, I have a yen for pictures. Yeah, you and a million other guys. Oh, uh, this is my director, Mr. Pirelli. Hello, Pirelli. Hello. I met him yesterday at the office. Oh. Say, I want to talk to you boys about giving him a test. He's a swell picture, Beth. Yeah, yeah, some other time. We're busy now. Where are you shooting today, mister? Over on Santa Maria, a little island about 18 miles off the coast. Why? Well, I, I did nothing. Well, here's the company. All right, you guys, get aboard that boat. Come on, let's go. Right down there. Come on. Bring that wardrobe with you. Come on, come on, hurry it up. Get down there. All right. Hey, what do we eat? I don't see lunch on that boat. Got a bag of rice over there for us. Oh, go on, you big fat giant. <laughs> <laughs> right, get a boat, boy. Hey, those men look like the real thing. They sure do. We got the best makeup man in town. Oh. Well, I should think you'd use real Chinese, then you wouldn't have to make them up. Well, hey, we ought to hire you as a technical advisor or something. Oh, no, no. You know best, of course. 
Uh, what sort of a picture are you making? A sea story, Chinese pirates and everything. Hey, Billy. Yes, sir. Good picture. Well, tough looking bunch we have there, officer. Now, we're used to seeing actors in makeup. You want to put the island? Yeah. I hope the light holds out. We got a late start. We'll probably have to make two or three trips before we shoot all the stuff we need. Uh, do you intend to stay over at the island? Oh, no, no. We'll come back every night. I'll be seeing you. Right. Oh, Mr. Brace. Yeah? Hey, I'd be glad to go along and play any small part you have just for the experience, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't expect any salary. Sure, why don't you give him a break? He can act like a house of fire. I have no doubt of that, but we don't burn any houses in this picture. Let's go, boys. Well. Wise guy. next time. Yes, I hope so. Hey, Bobby, we gotta get back to town. Gosh, yes. I've got a deadline to make. Come on, Alan. Right. Bobby. What? Yeah, I think I'll stay around here for a while. <laughs> I'll cover the waterfront. <laughs> Are you sure you'll be all right without me? Oh, I can find my way around. Okay, but don't fall overboard. I'll be careful. Hey, Bobby, what do you think I got? Double pneumonia. Yeah, uh, no, 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 double exposure. Are you going to tell me you didn't get a picture of the Chinese general to go with this story of mine? Oh, I got the general all right, but he's all mixed up with a couple of other guys. Holy smoke, what is this? It's just my luck, that's what it is. Them two guys wasn't in there when I shot that. Well, they're there now. Why, that one's Mr. Brace. Yeah, I know it is. That guy's got a nerve coming into my picture like that. Well, who's the other one? I don't know, never saw him before. And I thought we was gonna break the front page with this. We'll crash the front gate with a can tied to us if we don't show up with that picture. Hello, Miss Reynolds' desk. Hi there, actor. Where are you? Still at the waterfront. Listen, Bobby. Did your cameraman develop the negative of that picture he shot at the pier? He certainly did. He also developed a case of lead poisoning. They're going to find him tomorrow morning with a bullet in his neck. Yeah, well, don't shoot him till he makes a print of that picture and save the print for me, will you? I'll tell you why another time. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye. Ah, oh, gee, Bobby, I'm sorry. Listen, Stu, we've got 30 minutes flat to grab another shot of the general. And if you miss this one, I won't leave a hair on your head. Go get your camera. Come on, do your stuff. Put on an act. Watch me. I can't shoot this scene till it's all been rewritten. Well, it's too bad you didn't find out about that before we came over here. How did I know the writer put all that junk in? I always said that guy was no good. No good? He couldn't write himself a letter. All right, all right. Pay him off and send him home. Well, listen, fellas. It's all off for today. Well, you'll well, never give us anything. It's all right. Now, listen. You'll get your checks. Take off that makeup and turn in your costume. We'll run you up to the boat landing. Then you can take the regular passenger steamer back to the mainland. Now everybody gets boat tickets and car fare. Now hurry it up. Get them off. Get on off. Oh, Come on, shake it up. Gee, I was surprised to hear from you yesterday, Mr. O'Connor. I didn't know the department knew I was out here. We know where all you boys are. Well, what happened? Nothing. They didn't even shoot a scene. As soon as we got over there, they paid us off and sent us home. Why didn't they bring you back in the same boat they took you over in? I can't know. Where did you phone that message from? From a pay station at the boat landing on the island. I thought you'd want to know which way I was coming back in case you wanted me. The whole setup sounds goofy to me. All right, Briggs, find out if they're going back to the island tomorrow. Yes, sir. Mr. O'Connor, you won't spill nothing about my record, will you? Not as long as you keep quiet about me. Trust me for that. I make my living doing gangster bits in the movies. But if they ever found out I was once the real McCoy, they wouldn't even let me inside of a studio gate. <laughs> Crime doesn't pay, eh, Briggs? You're telling me? Hey, Briggs, there's that same copper on the float again. Never mind him. He'll think this is the same bunch of extras we took over this morning. Hello? I see you're still on the job. Oh, yes. Have any luck on the island? Uh, none at all. Everything went haywire. Uh, we'll have to go back again. Got plenty more to do. Well, good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Ah.
Shut up, you bird! Shut up! Morning. Why, hello, Mr. O'Connor. Hello. What little thing can I do for you? Well, I'd like to see Mr. Brace. If you don't mind. Well, I don't mind, but uh, maybe he might. You see, he's in conference. Sure. We'll make it next Tuesday. Oh, about 11 o'clock. We'll be here. All right. Goodbye. Who was it? That guy from the Motion Picture Producers Association. Checking up on us again. He wants to know why we haven't sent our script over to be censored. <laughs> well, send him a telephone book. Listen, you can't laugh those guys off. First thing you know, they'll have the Department of Justice in here, giving us the once-over. This racket is good for about two more trips. And then we do a fade, see? Come on, in the boat. Check it up, watch your step there. Come on, drop that water overboard. It's a good trip. All right, make it fast, make it fast. We go Quiet down, now listen to this scene. Now the story of this scene goes like this. One of the coolies has tried to help the white woman escape from the Chinese pirates, eh? The other guys find out about it and they want to kill him. The whole mob goes after him while he's running for his life. Uh, give me that script a minute. How am I doing? Swell. But don't lay it on too thick or they'll get wise to you. I'm telling you, what this scene needs is a little comedy to jazz it up a bit. It's too heavy. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it. There's something smelly about this outfit. Yeah. Brace told Bobby they were shooting a picture called Fool's Rush In, and they ain't doing nothing of the kind. I got a peek at their script coming over in the boat, and the title on it was Aunt Elsie's Wholesome Recipes. How'd you get a job with this outfit? Well, Bobby fixed it. <laughs> I might have guessed that. <laughs> She, she wants me to get the lowdown on him. Oh. You know, you look so good in that outfit, I didn't know you'd get on the boat. <laughs> Bobby said you wanted a copy of this picture I shot at the pier the other day. Oh, yes, yes. I'm glad you brought that. You see? Hmm. It happened like this. I was sent hey. out to... Hey! You guys are too busy to listen to me. Maybe we ought to lay off for a while. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I was just showing him a picture of my family. Yeah, well, forget your family and get on the job. Yes, sir. Listen, you. I picked you for the Chinaman the mob is trying to kill, see? Oh, but I don't know how to get killed. You'll learn. You know how to run, don't you? Oh, yeah, but... Uh... Oh, come on. Now, let's rehearse the scene. The rest of you birds come tearing out from behind those bushes. This little lug is running for his life, and you're right on his neck. You're trying to massacre him. You're yelling for his blood. You want to tear him to pieces. And uh, don't be backward about it. Make it real. It's the only way you can get a scene like this. Yeah, but not too real. Shut up. Make it so real, he'll have to run for his life. And as for you, you run down this way, right past the camera. Hey, but wait a minute. Supposing they catch up with me, what then? Boy, that's gonna be just too bad. Oh. Okay, let's try it once. Now you birds, get over there behind those bushes. And when I yell action, you get going. All right, places, everybody. All right, over behind those bushes. Come All on, right. make it snappy. 
Come on, under cover now. Come on, hurry it up. All set, boys. Ready? Action! Kill him! Yeah. Yeah. Here, it's all over. No fooling? No fooling. Come on, they won't hurt you. Come on in here. Come on, shake it up. That was a swell scene, Pirelli. Yeah, too bad we didn't have some film in the box. <laughs> all right, pay the gang off and send them home. That'll be all for today, boys. Take off your makeups and get into your own clothes. I'm sending you back on the passenger steamer. Now, come on, get a move on and turn in those costumes. Uh, okay. Well, I guess this is as good a place as any. Gee, I'm glad to get away from that mob. They take their work too serious to suit me. <laughs> Did you uncover the big story? Not yet. They shot a scene all right. Seemed rather short day's work to me. What are you going to do now? Going to meet Bobby up at the island boat landing. And then what? Oh, she's got something up her sleeve. I don't know what it is. She wouldn't tell me. We've got about two hours to wait before it'll be dark. I radioed the skipper not to bring his schooner into the pier tonight. Told him to send the Chinese off in a lifeboat. I've got a hunch that that newspaper dame is wise to something. You don't seem to be in any hurry. You better get that makeup off. No, I'm in no hurry. Look here. Turn this costume into the assistant for me, will you? Collect my check and tell him I'm walking to the boat landing. Walking all that distance? Sure, I need the exercise. What are you going to do with that suit? I'm going to keep it as a souvenir of my first movie. Okay, you know best. Any message for Bobby? Yes. Tell her to keep away from here, that's all. All right, don't get lost. Don't worry, I'll follow the beach. So long. Be seeing you. Hurry it up, get in there. Right down the end of pier there. Well, so far, so good. What, a, what about that guy who walked? Let him walk. He won't do any more walking if he comes back here tonight. They should have shown up over an hour ago. Maybe they met with bad weather coming up the coast. Ah, that won't hold them back. That schooner has a 500 horsepower auxiliary inside it. Ahoy! Am I on the right course for Santa Maria? The signal for tonight. Come on, boys. Into the boat, everybody. There they are on the float at the end of the pier. Get down, get down. Oh. Be quiet, will you? Do you want them to hear us? They hurt my knee in a rock. I bet I've got to run in my stocking. Never mind, they'll run. Come on, keep crawling. enough. We can get a swell shot of the pier from here. That walk on the landing about finished me. Oh, my feet. Okay. You press this button when I give you the signal. Now, don't fail me. We won't have time to reload this thing. Go ahead now. Shut up, you birds! Shut up! Now. <laughs> Look, there's someone up there with a flashlight. Holy smokes, they saw us. They're coming. Come on, let's get to the beach. We can run Here. faster. Come on. <laughs> That's that newspaper dame and her stools.
are we going to do with these mugs? Throw them over the side. Now, we'll find a better way than that. Happened. You were creased with a bullet. I was? Where? Ooh. Be careful, you're bandaged. You were brought here last night. Right. You've been unconscious up to now. When I got here, you were muttering about a busload of smuggled Chinese. I took a chance and broadcast a warning to the highway patrol. The bus was stopped on its way north. Good. What about the other car, Brace's car? Any news of that? I don't know what you mean. Well, Brace is the head of this smuggling outfit. They've carried off Bobby Reynolds and her cameraman in that car. Say, I, I, I've got to get out of here. Now, wait a minute, old. Please, take it easy. This picture was found on you. Where'd you get it? I took it at the pier the other day. That's Brace. Recognize the man with him? Sure I do. Burke Darrell. Well, then you can see what this means. Darrell's the man behind this smuggling racket. I have information that Darrell's hiding out in a ranch house in Hidden Valley, an isolated section in the foothills. Well, that must be where they headed for last night. Say, let's get going. But you can't leave here in your condition. His condition is right. Dietrich, get me some clothes. Sure I will. Broadcast a warning to blockade all roads from the ranch house. Tell the highway patrol to hem them in. And send an airplane with an observer to report all movements from the ranch. Right. And don't forget the clothes. But you can't get out of bed. Oh, don't be silly. Where's that Chinese suit I had on when I came here? It's being cleaned. Oh, it would be. Now I've got to wait till Dietrich gets back. What good's a man without a pair of pants? I have pulled one boater after another. And the dumbest play of all was to bring these people here. What do you think you're going to do with them now? What do you suppose? There's only one thing to do. Hey, wait a minute. I think I've got something here. CHP 137. CHP 137. California Highway Patrol. CHP 137. Proceed south on Highway 61 to Old Simeon Ranch. Report for orders. To immigration inspectors deeply in upon it. Arrest all persons leaving ranch house. Calling CHP 137. The old Simeon Ranch, that's this place, isn't it? Of course it is. We've been crossed. We've got to get out of here. You're telling me? We're split, see? You'll go with me in my car. It's faster than anything they've got on the road. Al, you and Joe take the small touring car and head north on 61. And take this goofy dame and her stooge along with you and get rid of them tonight. Why on 61 we're sure to be picked up? No, you won't. Send the big truck out ahead of you and work the old gag. Come on, get going now. Here we go, sister. You two, this was... Come on. Come on. We'd better catch up to the truck. There's a police car trailing us. Immigration Service, Plane 77. Reporting from Section 342, Hidden Valley. Small yellow touring car driving north on Highway 61. Calling all cars. There's the car we're after. Signal that truck driver to slow down and pick us up.
must have taken a side road. We'll go back. That copper again. You fellas seen anything of a small gray touring car on this highway? Sure. The driver cussed us off because we wouldn't give him room enough. Thanks. Okay. Well, this is a blind road. They couldn't go any farther. And the marks where the truck stopped. Well, this is Bobby's shoe. I've got it, Dietrich. They let down a ramp, drove the little car into that big truck we stopped back there. Come on, let's go. Shoot them guys in a hurry. They'll never know what became of us. Tell the driver to stop. We're going to switch cars. Fred's car coming back. They've switched cars on us. Drop them guns and stick them up or I'll let you have it. You two scream out of there and get into that other car. Come on, step on it. We're going places. Get over on the side of the road. Come on, get over. I'm leaving you guys right here, get me? As long as I keep going, the Damon has stooge will keep on living. But if I'm stopped or followed, 
They get it. And if you think I'm stalling, you're nuts. Get it, Gunner Hedrick! Hold still. There. Oh, it feels good to get my mouth open. Lee, I bet you never had it closed so long in your life. Gosh, what a relief to be able to use it again. Well, it's just as good as it ever was. Quick, untie my hands. I want to use those, too. Well, hold Hurry still. up with my hands. I got plenty of use for mine. But not the same as I have. Uh-uh. I want to scratch my nose. Come on, get in. <laughs> you know now that I'm not an archer. Oh, I knew that from the first. But you never knew that I wasn't a newspaper woman. Oh, yes, I did. You knew that I was working for the Department of Justice? Certainly. And you knew I was working for the Immigration Service? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Great Scott. Just a couple of federal agents who couldn't fool each other. <laughs> no, but I'm going to keep on trying. Well, glad you tipped me off. <laughs> Shall we go? 